So a while back, I woke up in the middle of the night, grabbed my phone, because the Lord just started giving me all these words. <laughs> so I said, okay, okay, I got it, I got it. I'm typing, I'm typing. And then it kept going, it kept going, and I made sure to get it all down. This wasn't one of those I'll remember in the morning moments. I knew I needed to get it all right away. So um, I told Pastor Michael a couple days later, so I was up at 3 o'clock in the morning or something the other night, and um, I got it all down on my phone. I made myself a big note. I think uh, God has a message that you or Chris or somebody is supposed to give to the church because he just gave it all to me right then and there in that moment. Michael just, without hesitation, said, why don't you share it? <laughs> oh, right, of course, of course, I can do that. So I'm excited for this opportunity, of course, and um, not something I expected, but I'm excited to be able to share and, and share with you what God put on my heart that night. So. Um, yeah, let's pray together first. Lord, just help us to be open today to what you're trying to teach us as we gather here now and in the coming days, God. As we continue to fellowship together, may you just use us as your light to others around us, God. Thank you. Amen. So do you ever look at someone and the second you see them, you think of something they gave you? Maybe someone you've only met once before. Or now it's been a few times you've ran into them here and there. What have they given you those other times you've met with them? How about someone you've known for a long time? Now I know this one unfortunately isn't an obvious one for everybody. And I've tried my best not to take them for granted all these years. But for me, my parents. I stop and I really, really think about them. My mind just gets overwhelmed. I'm blown away by all that they've given and all that they've done for me and my family. And not just Chris and I and the boys, but the rest of my family, my brother and his family, um, my aunts, uncles, cousins, grandparents also, the whole crew. Does anybody else have anyone like that? Maybe you have someone you're thinking of. Maybe it's not your parents. Maybe the folks that have given you the goods, as I'd like to call it here, the ones that truly inspired you or sacrificed for you. Maybe they were other family members or friends or teachers, coaches, neighbors, pastors, maybe another mentor in your life. When people ask us, how's Walmigo going? We've gotten that a few times the past year. <laughs> the first thing that we tell them is that the people in this church are so supportive and so encouraging. So many of you here give so much just unconditionally. And I often pray that you all know what a huge difference that is making in people's lives. I have a couple other examples I wanted to share. Last month, a friend of mine over in Topeka mentioned that she'd like to get together soon. So I told her I'd like to as well, but I knew I needed to be getting ready for an upcoming trip. So I had a lot to do. So she offered to help me fold laundry and get this, do dishes <laughs> while we visit. What a great idea. Of course I'll take you up on that. So that meant a lot to me. She, she did it. We set the time. She came, brought her kids. They got to play together with our kids. And, um, you know, it was such a blessing to have her help that day. But even more so, our conversation and our time together during that time that she was here is something that I'll cherish for a really long time. She definitely reached out to me in a way that I didn't expect. Then also several years ago, a friend we have in Indiana, she knew we didn't have a whole lot of extra funds while we were serving at a church out there. So she picked me up one day, took me to the grocery store, loaded up the cart. She bought us a whole bunch of groceries. I don't remember exactly how much she bought us, um, but I can tell you it was way more than we were used to spending in one shopping trip. And though we can still keep in touch here and there on Facebook, you know, I don't talk to her a whole lot, but that right there is definitely something that I remember the most as soon as she comes to mind. Now, not everyone may have an abundance of these moments in their life, 
I recognize that. In fact, maybe there are people that we don't, you know, have such a good relationship with. And if we have a little rougher relationship with some people, we still see what they gave us though, right? Like maybe it was heartache and disappointment instead. When we meet someone for the first time, are we inherently looking or exploring to see what they can offer us? Even if it's just adding to our conversation or adding to our storehouse of feelings for that day, what can they offer me? We are geared to want to take. We are conditioned, in general, I believe, to want to have all of it, right? Things, opportunities, experiences, the relationships, all of that. Do you long for those things? They're good things, right? But what are we working to give to others, to leave with them, to leave behind in our stead as we part ways? Maybe it's only for a day or two. We'll see them again shortly. Or for months or years or forever. Love, encouragement, do we lift them up? Jesus said he came not to be served, but to serve and give his life. Do we leave people with that? Serving them, giving them life, sacrificing our desires and our wants? When we walk away from a conversation or hang up the phone, or even in our electronic messaging, social media encounters, what are we leaving with people? How about when we're gone for good? What will people have that we gave? What will they remember us by? What we had or had taken or what we gave and contributed to others? A legacy as such, right? Are we taking the time to give to others? And are we tuned in to the opportunities that God puts in front of us? Sometimes it's obvious in some ways it's what a lot of us are already doing. But I think we just definitely have to be ready for those moments to also come in ways we wouldn't expect, even if it's in the middle of the night, for example. <laughs> when we're open to the Spirit's leading, though, and we trust that God will help us do it, we will probably be giving of ourselves in ways that we never knew would be so beneficial to someone else. And then remember that we will be and feel the blessing. We will feel that blessing when we give to others. Whether it's our closest family and friends or just the person we meet one time in life. That blessing is real and it's there and we feel it when we give. A friend of mine in college, her and I would often say something to each other. Let's say she wanted to buy lunch for me and if I tried to refuse, she would remind me, don't steal this blessing from me right now. <laughs> okay, 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 I'll let you buy me lunch, I get it. And so then we'd, you know, switch it the next time and the other one would want to do something. Let me drive, let me use my gas, you know. And we would make sure and let the other one, you know, be the blessing. We recognize together the blessing that it truly is to be on the giving side of things. And guess what? as I realized this, that is also one of my fondest memories of my friendship with her. See how this works? <laughs> so it's inevitable that from our personal perspectives, we look at others, we, we remember one another by what he or she contributed, contributed to us and to those around us. So we must keep in mind, it's inevitable then that we ourselves are defined to others, not by what we get, but by what we give. Amen.